Hi everybody, I'm Lynn Rosenblatt, author of Monarch Buddies Munch a Bunch of Milkweed. And today I'm going to read to you my story. It is about two wonderful caterpillars who meet in the field and go through their entire life cycle together to become very best friends. So sit back, enjoy. Here we go. Monarch Buddies, Munch a Bunch of Milkweed. This story is dedicated to preserving the milkweed habitat of the magnificent monarch butterfly. Without milkweed, the monarch will not exist. Plant milkweed and nectar producing flowers in your gardens. Once upon a time, there was a handsome monarch butterfly named Max. His best friend was a beautiful monarch butterfly named Maisie. This is their amazing life story. Growing up, Max grew up in a milkweed field. His mother and father spent hours flying over the field. They danced in the air, sipped sweet nectar, and played in a warm August sunshine. It was a joyous event when Max's mother began laying eggs. One by one, she laid hundreds of tiny white eggs, only on milkweed leaves. Max was lucky. She laid his egg in a very safe place. And then she flew away. Max grew inside his tiny white egg. In a few days, he hatched out of the egg by chewing a hole in the top of the eggshell. Slowly, he climbed out of his shell and sniffed the fragrant air. Off in the distance, Max could see pom-poms of sweet-smelling milkweed swaying in the breeze. He gazed in amazement at his beautiful new world. It is so special here, he sighed. And then, as caterpillars always do, he turned around and ate his eggshell. Hmm, do you eat eggshells for breakfast? <laughs> Baby caterpillars have lots of fun. They love to crawl in the tender young leaves at the top of the plants. Max chewed and munched milkweed leaves all day long. In fact, he ate so much that his colorful striped skin began to feel too tight for his body. So he shed it. He munched and he grew and he shed his skin again. He munched and grew and shed his skin again. Each time, Max rubbed off his face mask too. Can you see it? Shedding is always such an ordeal, said Max, in no particular order. Hmm, I squeeze, I push, I tug, uh, I pull, until I lift myself out of that tight old skin. And every time I shed, I rub my face mask off too. After all that hard work, I deserve a healthful treat. Hmm, I love eating my old skin. It's full of vitamins. As he grew over the next two weeks, he became a milkweed munching machine. Wow, Max munched a bunch of milkweed. By the time Max was a full-grown caterpillar, he had shed his skin not once, not twice, not three times, but four times. He loved his home in the milkweed field. There was plenty of warm sunshine and lots of yummy milkweed to eat, but something was missing from his life. I'm lonely, said Max. All I do is munch and munch and chew and munch and chew and munch some more. One day, while Max was sunning himself, a little caterpillar walked up onto his leaf. Excuse me, said the friendly little caterpillar. My name is Maisie. Are you new around here too? Would you like some company? Why, yes, said Max. Perhaps you would like to sit a while and share my leaf with me. 
Thank you, I think I will, said Maisie, while inching her way up onto the leaf. And from that moment on, a wonderful friendship was born. Max and Maisie became caterpillar buddies. The Funny Feeling The lazy days of summer passed by. After many days of munching milkweed leaves, Max woke up one bright morning and sensed that something was different. Hmm, I'm not hungry at all today. My special day must be drawing near. He looked around to tell Maisie, but she was nowhere to be seen. I wonder where she went. Maybe she's feeling strange too. I must find Maisie. Maisie, Maisie, where are you? Max looked everywhere peeking here and there, searching high and low for many places. Maybe she climbed to the top of this steep mountain. Maybe she climbed to the top of this stick. Oops, oh, that's not Maisie. Maybe she crawled across this rusty old bridge. Ah, there she is. Hey, Maisie, it's me. Max, what are you doing down there? Our special day is drawing near, Max. I can feel it inside. I just wanted to take one last look around at our beautiful milkweed field while I am still a caterpillar. This is pom-pom paradise, she thought to herself. Maisie stayed a little longer and gazed lovingly at her field. Then, very slowly, she crawled back to Max and went about her day. The Amazing Silk Button. On their way home, Max and Maisie passed by their good friend Montgomery. He was underneath a stick, sitting on a sticky white bump. What are you doing? asked Maisie. I'm getting ready for my special day, said Montgomery. I began weaving my silk grid hours ago. Then I built this nifty silk button and I sat on it. Is that what we're supposed to do? asked Maisie. Oh, it, it sure is, said their friend. With a twinkle in their eye, Max and Maisie quickly crawled away to find the perfect place to spin their own silk buttons. Max searched for hours to find the perfect stick. Now it was time to put his silk spinnerets to work. They were located under his head and he could spin silk threads just like a spider. My grid needs to be strong, thought Max. First his head went to the left and then his head went to the right. Back and forth, back and forth, over and over. Soon he had piled a neat little lump of sticky thread in the middle of his grid. His button was complete. Max was so tired, oh, ever so tired. He carefully turned his body around and shortened himself, positioned himself on that sticky pile of silk thread. Maisie, look at me, I'm sitting on my button. I'm attached. Me too, said Maisie. I found a dandy little spot to weave my button too. Then she and Max rested quietly from all their good work in the warm summer shade. But not for long. Soon Max was calling excitedly. <laughs> Maisie, Maisie, look at me now. There was Max hanging from his button upside down. Oh, Max, you're such a show off. Montgomery told me that hanging upside down is all part of getting ready for our special day. Try it, Maisie. This is fun. Okay, Max, here I go. Whee! shouted Maisie, and Maisie landed upside down just like her buddy Max. This is more fun than hanging onto a milkweed pot on a windy day. I'm queen of the stick, upside down. It's like bungee jumping. Montgomery would be proud of us. Max and Maisie snoozed and stretched in the warmth of the summer sun. 
It was a wonderful way to pass the time with your best buddy. Soon they would shed their skin for the fifth and final time. Little did they realize that something very mysterious was about to happen. Max and Maisie would never look the same again. Turning green. As the afternoon passed on, Max had a wonderful time watching Maisie. He amused himself trying to decide if Maisie looked more like a letter J or an upside down candy cane. But then he began noticing something else. Maisie's antennae were drooping and her body seemed to be changing color beneath her striped caterpillar skin. Maisie was turning green. Maisie, Maisie, don't look now, but you're turning green. And so she was. Maisie stretched and quivered as her body swelled and straightened. Oh, I do feel a bit unusual, she said, chuckling to herself over Max's enthusiasm. I can feel my outer skin splitting behind my head. It kind of tickles, but it doesn't hurt at all. This is it, Max. This is how it starts. I'm getting ready for my special day. Oh, look, Maisie, I think I'm changing color, too. My skin feels very tight. Shh, said Maisie. I am trying to rest, but you do look a little green. Montgomery told me that we would shed our skin one more time. He said we have green bodies beneath our striped skin. They both laughed. Won't we look funny? Now let's get some rest. This time, Max listened to Maisie. All this activity was very, very tiring. So Max and Maisie drifted off into a very welcome sleep. The dream. It was nighttime. Max and Maisie were sleeping soundly beneath the stars. Soon Max began to snore. <sighs> He began to dream the most amazing dream, a magical, mysterious dream, a green dream. His antennae started quivering, his body straightened out, his stripes began to disappear, his skin was tossed about. He wiggled left, he wiggled right, he shed off all his clothes. A miracle happened from his tails down to his nose. He changed into a chrysalis. His body did not move. Then little pearls began to show from deep within a groove. His outer skin turned crystal clear. The pearls turned into gold. And deep within, two magic wings were waiting to unfold. Max's green body looked like a jewel shimmering in the moonlight. It was the strangest dream he ever had. The next morning, Max and Maisie awakened to a very big surprise. Their caterpillar bodies were gone. Max's dream really did happen. It wasn't a dream at all. No longer did they wear the colorful stripes of a caterpillar. Through a miracle of nature, their bodies had changed into a beautiful shimmering green chrysalis and halfway around the top, a ring of golden pearls sparkled in the morning sunlight, just like in Max's dream. For the next several days, Max watched Maisie. He loved watching her sparkle in the sunshine. After it rained, she changed every day and Max could see her peeking through the clear covering of her chrysalis. Once again, his, ba, his buddy looked very different. Her light green color was slowly disappearing and now Max could see colors of black and orange and white polka dots too. Max knew something very special was about to happen. The special day. Good morning, everyone. Surprise, surprise. Do you recognize me? It's your old friend, Max. 
the most amazing thing happened. Maisie and I were sound asleep. The sun came up. I opened my eyes. I stretched a little and pop, my chrysalis opened. I almost fell out, but I held on to those nifty little ridges at the top. Wait a minute. The door of Maisie's chrysalis is opening too. I'm so excited. I can hardly wait to see her. Here comes Maisie. Wow. Hi, Max. It's me, Maisie. Do you recognize me? I sure do, Maisie. I watched you emerge from your chrysalis. I'm so glad to see you. Our special day has finally arrived. This has been the most exciting day of my life. Look at us. We're beautiful monarch buddies. We're not caterpillar buddies anymore. We're monarch buddies. And so we are, said Maisie happily. But now we need to do some stretching and drying exercises. Our wings are still very wet. So get ready, Max. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. <laughs> you were great, Max, but now I am hungry. We haven't eaten in weeks. After our wings dry, let's have lunch. I can hardly wait to try out my new proboscis. Your new what? My new proboscis. You have one too, Max. It's part of your face. Montgomery also told me that monarch butterflies can do amazing things. We, sw we smell with our antennae, we taste with our feet, and sip nectar through a food tube called a proboscis. It works like a straw. Our munching days are over. Maisie flew to a tiny marigold. She practiced sipping for hours. I love being a butterfly, thought Maisie. Remembering her quiet moments as a caterpillar, Maisie took a long look around this time as a butterfly. Then she flew to her old friend. He was just coming out of his chrysalis too. Hi, Montgomery, we missed you. Max and Maisie loved their life in the milkweed field. They met many new friends. Max and Maisie spent days flying above the milkweed field. They danced above the plants, sipped sweet nectar from the blossoms with all their friends and played in the late summer sunshine. Soon they were flying high up into the sky. Playscapes of clouds drifted by as warm summer breezes gently faded away. Blankets of frost covered the fields and milkweed pods ripened with seeds. Finally, summer came to a quiet end. As the cool, brisk winds of autumn swirled through the fields, milkweed seeds escaped from their pods. The trees changed color, the nights became cold, and geese honked overhead in the sky. Oh, I'm shivering, Max. It's hard to fly. Oh, and my wings are chilled. We need to find shelter. Maisie, look at the pods. They are bursting. The milkweed seeds will be flying free in the wind to find new destinations just like us. We can't stay here any longer. It's time to fly south to a safer place. Maisie, listen to me. I have some sad news. Montgomery flew by today. He stopped by to say goodbye and wish us a safe flight, but sadness filled his heart. Poor Montgomery, his whole world has fallen apart. Yesterday, a big yellow bulldozer plowed away his favorite milkweed field. He said it's happening everywhere. 
Montgomery flew away with a broken heart. What, said Maisie? I don't believe it. Frantically, she flew off to her favorite lookout pod. Far off in the distance, Maisie could see the yellow bulldozer. Max was right. Sadly, Montgomery's field was gone. I wonder if our milkweed field will still be here next spring. Maisie flew over her field one last time. As far as she could see, the milkweed was at peace. It looks so beautiful here, she thought to herself. Then with a deep sigh and hope in her heart for a safe tomorrow, Maisie looked back at the field and said goodbye. Then with a flutter of wings, she flew to Max. Fly close, Maisie. We'll find our way. Just think, we will be flying south for thousands and thousands of miles across North America to a beautiful mountain range in Mexico, gliding and soaring and sipping nectar all the way. When we get there, we will rest all winter with millions, millions of other monarchs. Many monarchs who live west of us will fly to the California coastline and see the Pacific Ocean. How exciting! Maisie's heart pounded with emotion. Ye yearning to fly, she fluttered her wings and circled around Max. Wait for me! Let's go! Max and Maisie never left each other's side. Forever in their hearts, they will always remember their special days in the milkweed field. And forever in their hearts, they will always be monarch buddies. Hi, everybody. I hope you enjoyed my story. I had a wonderful time reading it to you. I want to wish everyone a wonderful day. Thank you for joining so that you could hear the, the story of my heart. It's, it's all dedicated to preserving milkweed and creating a safe, happy environment for the monarchs. Plant milkweed wherever you can so that the monarch mama can have a place to lay her beautiful eggs raise the caterpillars and grow up to be gorgeous beautiful butterflies that fly south to mexico or to wherever their destination is to be and preserve the monarch's habitat this is this is the goal of this entire entire thing so onward and upward fly safe Thank you everybody for joining me today.